he said. Uh, we've, uh, we came here a long way, probably about 15 years ago, 14 years ago, like that, right when we met. Brother Bobby came preaching our church uh, there in West Harrison, Indiana. But it's good to be in with you all here this morning. My daughter had a Bible quiz in Hummelstown, and uh, I looked it up on the internet, and I said, oh, Brother Bobby's only about 35, 40 minutes away. We've got to go see him while we're there. And uh, I'm glad the Lord uh, uh, got us here this morning, and uh, they took it. We drove, uh, I'm from Indiana, so everything's flat, and uh, we was all the way over here, and uh, I don't do mountains very well, big hills, and uh, we came over one this morning, I was driving, using my wife drives over the mountains, and uh, we got about halfway up, she said, uh, boy, this looks like a mountain, I said, thanks for telling me. <laughs> I didn't figure that one out, and amen. But uh, you know, uh, Brother Bobby said something this morning about life being happily ever after. Life doesn't always go happily ever after, does it? Amen. I was thinking, uh, my brother-in-law called me the other day and said, I just lost my job. He said, been there 25 years. He said, they just let me go, no, no reason or anything, just uh, the company decided to downsize. And, and, you know, and trouble comes, amen. And uh, it usually comes, you're not expecting it. And, uh, we moved into a new house about seven years ago. We bought a little house there in Bright, Indiana. And, uh, we were laying in bed one night. The kids were gone to mom and dad, my mom and dad's. And, uh, Teresa rolled over in the middle of the night and said, I hear somebody in our basement. We had one of those walk-in we had one of those walk -in basements from the backyard. She said, there's somebody in the basement. And uh, that's scary, you know. And uh, uh, I got up and uh, half asleep and uh, staggered into my son's room and across the hall. And my son's a hunter, fisherman, and outdoorsman, you know, so I know I can get something to defend myself with. <laughs> and I uh, went in there and uh, uh, I grabbed the, the nearest uh, rifle he had in his room there, started uh, toward the basement steps. And uh, I got there and uh, started, got about halfway down the basement steps. And you know, when trouble comes, let me tell you, some people are not there to help you. Amen. Uh, my wife is standing at the top of the steps by this time. And uh, she looks down at me and she says very loudly, she said, you know there's no bullets in that gun, right? <laughs> so, uh, I just looked at her and I said, uh, she's trying to get me killed. And uh, fortunately, you know, that's kind of funny, but you know, I said, I'm glad there wasn't nobody down there when I got down there. Uh, we had some trouble, amen. But I called my brother-in-law up and I said, we, uh, we talked a little bit. And I said, you know, uh, I started reading the story about Jarius' daughter. And I said, this, the story of Jarius' daughter always stuck out to me, but it's more so this year. My daughter's 12 years old now. And that's how old Jarius' daughter was. And, you know, Jarius, he got to the place where he, uh, he, got, uh, he, started, he was looking for Jesus. He knew where his help was going to come from. And it said when he saw Jesus, he ran up to Jesus and fell at his feet. And then the next verse says, and he besought him greatly. Amen. And uh, you know what? I don't know what everybody's need here I'm sure not everybody's life is happily ever after here this morning. If you're in trouble this morning, fall at Jesus' feet and to see Him greatly. And I like what He did next. You know, you read that story, Mark chapter five. You go through that, and uh, you know we got the verses there where the woman with the issue of blood just got healed, and uh, Jairus got to see that, and uh, he, he probably his faith is probably uh, on fire, you know, ready to go and. And uh, somebody runs up and says, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter's dying. And you know what? Uh, uh, go to the Lord anyway. Even if it doesn't look like uh, anything can happen, you're not troubling the master. Amen. I said, I told my kids, I said, I don't want you troubling anybody else. Come to me. I'm your father if you need help. And uh, he's not troubled with your request this morning. And Jerry, even though it sounded like it, there was nothing going to go on, even though there was death, uh, he said, you know what? I'm still going to take the Lord home with me, and I'm still going to give the Lord a chance to work in my situation. Amen. When you go home today, take the Lord with you. Amen. Amen. Let Him work for you today. And like I said, it's good to be here this morning. I'm glad the Lord got us here this morning. And good to see Brother Bobby, and good to see all of you good folks this morning. Amen. Pray for my wife and daughter, they say.
promise, don't tell Brianna because she's going to hold you to it. You get something changed and then she forgets. But it's worked to her advantage because she can remember things. And, you know, when it comes to scripture, she's sitting back there quoting it with the minister that's providing the word. And I appreciate that because when you get it in their heart, they're going to know what's right from wrong when it comes to stand the test of time. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to quote from John 6, uh, 66 to uh, 71. From that time on, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you want to leave too? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One God. Jesus answered them, haven't I chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking about Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. For although he was one of the twelve, he was later to betray Jesus. I don't know if any of you heard this song or not, but it's called Jesus is All That I Need. Uh, Brother Marty Milliken wrote this song a couple years before he died with his brain tumor. And, you know, that's all we need in this world is Jesus. Yes, money helps us get us where we're going and it gives us a good tool, but it's not what who makes us. It can be if that's what your ruler, if what you want to be the ruler of your life, but I'm so glad that Jesus is all that I'll ever need because he can be the only friend we need. He's the only person that's going to love us Amen. when nobody else loves us. When we're at our lowest point, depression comes in, oppression, whatever that feeling is, God is there. And, you know, um, our family has lost their jobs and um, about 20 years ago, within two weeks, Brother Neil and I, we both lost our jobs. Our companies were doing different things. They were outsourcing. We know that horrendous feeling of how that is of how are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? But God knows how to make everything flow in time. And from that job, I went to another job for two years when I lost my job. I was there almost 10 years. Went to another, worked for an individual doctor. It went along fine, Brother Bobby. But then, you know, I thought, there's got to be something better. Then I applied for Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. And so I think Sister Holly and I was hired the same day, not knowing how things would fall into place. And we were working in the same tower. But, you know, God knows the steps and the path you need to take. And how that all needs to come back and unravel. And you look back and think, wow, that's amazing. So I appreciate the Lord. He's good. Sing with us.
I want us to do this this morning. I know it's Sunday morning.